Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. In today's video, we're going to talk about the number two defense in the WNBA in the Chicago Sky. The Chicago Sky do a lot of unique things to create opportunities for their highly skilled and talented players to go make plays on the floor. But first, let's start off with some stats. So the Sky rank number two in terms of points per possession and points per game. But the things that stood out to me were their really highly effective shooting and ranking first in points per possession off post-ups and points per possession off of cuts. This shows that they're highly efficient and find a lot of easy opportunities deep in the paint to capitalize on for their team. But one last stat that I also want to touch on is that they're able to run the floor very well. They're ranked number two in points per possession in terms of transition also. Coach James Wade has been able to formulate one of the most efficient and effective offenses in the WNBA. This has led them to the number one in the Eastern Conference and the number two overall offense. So in this video, we're going to dive into different parts of their offense, starting with their transition offensive scheme. So we're going to start by talking about their transition offense in terms of their players and personnel that allows them to be successful. In these first couple of clips, look at how Candace Parker pushes it up the floor. They have one through four slash five players on the floor at all times that have the ability to put the ball on the ground, push the pace, and make smart, under control decisions on the break. But now to dive into more of the scheme and tactical side of things, they put a lot of pressure on the rim. So you can see they're pushing the break, and you saw at the top of your screen there was an initial rim run, and then the person away from the ball cuts behind. They had two rim cutters in one transition or one break. That is unique and it really puts a lot of pressure on the defense to get back, settle in the paint, and protect. In this clip here too, you'll see they throw it ahead, there's the initial rim run by Candace, and then there's a second rim run by the five man. This double rim run tactic really makes things tough. It forces the defense to shrink and if they don't, they're going to pay for a layup. That clip they shrunk in and opened up a corner three. This clip you'll see they're pushing the break, Cooper gets out, they swing it, Candace gets a second cut, and they weren't there for that second one. They aren't able to react in time to make a play. This double rim cut is especially effective and it allows for more movement and it flows right into their half court offense as we'll talk about later. Their transition offense is quick, they really look to throw it ahead, and they really apply pressure to the rim on a consistent basis, allowing things to open up early and often. Now, let's dive into their number one rated post offense. First, we're going to talk about the spacing. In this clip, you'll see Emma gets the touch, and after the touch, it's four out. They got four wide, high, and they like spacing the floor above the break to allow the big to work and also open up cutting angles that we'll talk about later. This clip, you'll see different spacing off of the action. They feed Emma, and then it turns into a three wide porch loaded. This is a different type of spacing when they have another non-shooting, non-spacing big on the floor to keep them on the porch, keep them active, and allow them to have easier opportunities to find cracks. Nine times out of ten, though, you will see that the Sky like using the four out. They like feeding the post, spacing the floor around them, allowing people to make decisions off of the ball. And yet alone, it provides a lot of space for their skilled big men to make plays deep in the paint and score effectively. Now let's talk more about that movement. In this clip against the Sparks, you'll see that they get the post touch and look at all this movement off the ball. There's a pin, there's a Laker, there's another pin in the slot. There's a ton of screening and cutting action. On the attack, three players crash the paint. That is incredible movement. It makes it really tough for the help side to be there and be active. In this clip, there's a flare at the top and then the slot which is gonna cut in there's just so much movement. In this one, they wrap over the top. There's a slot cut. There's also a weak side activity in terms of like deciding the cut, but it opens up a three with all that movement. Their post offense creates a lot of great opportunities due to this movement. They'll feed the post, they'll move around, and it's really tough for a help side to be there, make a play. One type of movement that I really think is huge in their offense, you saw in that last clip in this clip here, baseline cuts they love cutting from the baseline whether it's strong or weak side that baseline cut is typically open because the defender will turn their head turn their body and it's a really tough recovery for them 
And these last two clips will show one of their favorite cuts that they use for Cooper. They use a pin action, feed the post, and then Cooper will flip around at the top of the key and dive down the middle. Now let's dive into the weeds a little bit and talk about their offensive flow. So to start things off, we're going to talk about their base structure of their offense. This clip will show a really good and quick example. So you see two-man action on the strong side and three-man space weak. A lot of their offense is run and flows out of that spacing regardless of the action that it comes off of, whether it's a pistol, whether it's a horns, whether it's just even a simple ball screen. A lot of it turns into this two-man action with three wide. The spacing typically goes top of the key, high wing, and at the breakish area, and those are where the weak side plays. There's a lot of movement on the weak side that we'll get to later, but this two-man action, three-man space, is what their offense is built upon, and a lot of their action flows into and initiates just movement and offensive flow. So here are some clips that could show that off-ball movement and off-ball flow. Two-man action, three-man space, they swing, to the corner and then there's that little rip screen dive get the layup this clip against phoenix you can see it flows straight into the two-man action with between candace parker and van sloot you get them on the wing three wide they feed the post dive from the top of the floor that two-man action leads to a lot of defensive standing still ball watching and it leads to a lot of easy opportunities off the ball to find space find cracks and even just off of ball movement and player movement good things could happen that one was off the 45 on the weak side. Very Euro, if I'd like to say myself. This clip, same thing, off the 45. Great cuts by finding and reading the defense. As I brought up Euro earlier, they have a lot of Euro-esque offensive tendencies within their flow. So in that clip, there was the ball screen in the high wing, the big flash to the top of the floor, and then it turns into a high low between the bigs. That is a Euro type of spacing and movement where the big is the next pass off the two-man action. In this clip here, you'll see two-man action. The big is the trail, 45 through, and then fill up. That's a Euro movement. That is Euro offense. This clip against the Lynx, it's a full possession of Euro. It's two-man action, three-man space, the fours at the top. And then as they come off the screen, they will reverse it to the four. There's the 45 and fill. And on the 45 and fill, there's that two-man action, and the big floats to the top of the floor to be the next. That is a full offensive possession of Euro. The use of Euro as a flow and just a huge part of their offense allows there to be pace and space and movement at all times, and it really makes it hard to guard for a defense that settles in and ball watches, and it causes confusion. Now, in these last two clips, I just want to talk about their effectiveness in ATOs and late-game situations. They are just able to execute at the highest level. They move the ball, they move with purpose, and they know their roles. This last clip against Atlanta is tremendous. They're down one with six minutes to go. It's getting to crunch time. They run a handoff weave into a double high ball screen, and it turns into a five out, and it just causes confusion, and it turns into an easy bucket for Candace. So to wrap up this video, the Chicago Sky have one of the best offenses in basketball, and I want to show you the shot chart real quick. They produce high quality opportunities consistently, as you can see in the paint and the corners. They give their team the most efficient shots possible on a consistent basis. But to wrap things up, Coach James Wade does an awesome job at formulating one of the best offenses in basketball. He first puts his team in position to put pressure on the rim early in transition. Then in the half court, he utilizes his skilled bigs to make plays in the post with space and movement. And lastly, in the half court, his use of Euro tendencies allows his team to play with that pace, space, and movement in the half court and really be effective. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Learn something about the Chicago Sky as we get closer to the WNBA playoffs. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you in the next one.